first time he was, you know, coming after you. Second time he was acting like your best friend. Which Connor do you expect to, to show up for this third one? I don't, the good thing about this one is if it's crazy Connor again, I just don't give a f you know, I, I really don't care. Um, and in the last one, too, if he'd have been crazy, I'd have been all right. Like, mentally, I'm just not a kid anymore. I'm a grown man, and I know what matters, and I know what I can't control, and I know, you know, I, I just don't beat myself up mentally like I used to with, with the critics. Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be crazy Connor again, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, do you almost, like, like welcome that? Do you look forward to it? And now that you're used to it, is it, like, almost funny? Or, like, how do you feel about it? It's, uh, I would say funny, but it's, like, how, how crazy can you be? You got knocked out last time out, you know. We put you on airplane mode in front of the world in Abu Dhabi. And, and what can you say, you know? You have said, though, that he is a champion and you expect him to, to rise to the, the, the challenge of, of what happened in his last fight. So are you, are you anticipating, like, what are you anticipating from him? Because his back is up against the wall a little bit. He has lost, what, four of his last five fights? What, what, are, you, what are you anticipating from him in terms of a competitor? The best, the most focused he's been. Um, it's, it's all on the line. It's really on the line for him. Like, like I said, he's not doing this for money. He's doing this for pride, for respect, uh, to prove that he's still an important piece of this 155-pound division. And that's, you know, that's a dangerous man, like I said. Somebody who's doing it for themselves and doing it to prove something. He's not doing it for anything else but that. He doesn't need to. So I know he's, he's motivated. He's not coming out here to, to, to damper his name anymore to get knocked out again, to get submitted again. He's coming to try to build McGregor Enterprises back to, you know, where it was. And uh, let's go. What do you think, uh, what adjustments is he going to make from the second fight? I mean, obviously he's going to try to check calf kicks if I throw him, right? Mm -hmm. Can you learn that in six months, effectively? Yeah. I, I mean, the martial artist he is and the understanding of fighting he has, I'm sure, I'm sure you can, but I might not even throw calf kicks. You know, because I'm, I'm expecting that. I'm, I'm expecting him to throw calf kicks, honestly. I'm, I'm working on, on countering calf kicks over here. I'm not even working on landing them. Uh, but I think he's going to be more aggressive. He's not going to let the fight unfold. I think as it unfolded and as I got more comfortable, he realized oh, this guy can really fight, you know. And, uh, you know, he's going to have to try to – if I was him, I would try to, to touch me early and, and keep me all out of rhythm. Because if this thing starts to blossom into a fight, second, third, fourth, we start hurting in there, we start having to grind it out, we start getting a rhythm, I'll win that fight 10 out of 10 times. Yeah. What kind of fight do you want? This I third want. fight, final, final fight most likely, right, with Conor McGregor, what kind of fight do you want? I want my blood and guts war. I want to question my will to fight. I want it to be uncomfortable from the first second of the first round. You know, I want to find out, you know, all this stuff. All, that's the thing about fighting, too, is, like, the only thing that's real is when that bell rings or whenever you show up in your training. Th those, that's the only real part about fighting that I love anymore. Everything else is uh, who can say some cool who can get a lot of likes on Instagram, who can get more followers, um, who can do some kind of funny video. It's just disgusting. It's a fashion show. It's all fake. The, but the real part about it is... When that bell rings, it's 100% real. And uh, I want to show him that and find that out about him. How, how, you know, talk it up, say this, say that. Let's find out who really wants to fight because I know I can count on me. I was gonna, not, a, not a question in my mind. I was going to say, you said you, you want to get to a point where you even question your will to fight, but haven't you already answered that? I mean, you're, you're known for that. I love it because it's a new experience every time I get put in that position. It elevates my life. I uh, leave the battlefield a different a better understanding of who I am a better understanding of fighting of why I do this uh, more appreciation of going home and seeing my daughter have a, everything she you know could ever ask for uh, it's just a lot deeper than just that but that 25 minutes lasts forever and I've come to that realization that that you just have to stick it out and suffer and, and push and I know I can do that better than anybody in the game well, obviously, you have a lot of confidence in your ability to do that. Going back to the second fight when things started to go rough for him, when you say that you want to you find that out if he has that in him, do you want to be here? Do you want to fight? Did you feel like he had that in the second fight and just couldn't overcome it? Or do you think he was starting to wane a little bit and even wanting to be there? I'm not sure if he had the conscious choice to, to say, like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I want out of here. I think I hit him with a good shot. I think he reached down, 
did something for when I kicked his calf and I hit him with the right hand. Everybody's talking about the calf kicks. But I threw a calf kick and switched to orthodox and threw a straight right hand from, from a, a right-handed stance position and clipped him good. And that's why I put the pressure on him. Go back and watch that, that sequence in slow motion. It wasn't the calf kick. It was him taking himself out of position and getting hit with the right hand when I switched stance. I do that be as good as anybody in the game in mixed martial arts. Switch power shots from, from right stance, left stance, and cover distance to where I don't get myself out of position. Mm -hmm. I do that better, or if not better, as good as anybody in the game. And, and he was at the end of a switch stance right hand that clipped him on the chin. And, he, and I know I can punch. He held it together well. His poker face was good, but he was hurt. That's why he went against the fence and was off balance. And you saw the rest. Well, you know, a lot of times when uh, a guy fights someone that he just beat in like very close proximity, so six months later, you know, back to back fights, the question is, well, can you do any better than you did right. the last time? Yeah. What could you do to Conor McGregor that would, that would be better? And ideally, like, what do you, how do you finish this fight? Kick him in the head instead of the calf. Uh, submit him. I mean, there's lots of ways to, to, to get him out of there. Sh drag him into deep waters and show him that I'm willing to bleed more than he is. I think that hurts, you know. Anybody can get caught. We both have been on the, on the wrong side of that, me and him, against each other. That's what makes this third fight everything it is. Mm -hmm. We both knocked each other out. Um, mine was a long time ago. His, he was, wasn't karate stance or whatever he says, or he was boxing more, or his calf was kicked. Who, who gives a We have a great story, and somebody's most likely getting finished again. Let's see who it's going to be. When you see him posting things on social media where he lost that fight, but he's still coming back and almost talking trash about that fight, saying you were backing up, you shot in the first 30 seconds. Like, what, what, what is your reaction to that? For, he just said something on his first one that shoots. A That's what he said, yeah? Mm -hmm. Isn't he the one who's always preaching about the flow, the full martial arts, no holds barred, no rules, the, the ultimate fighting, like when he's talking about boxing and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. How about the first one to get taken down? martial arts um, put it all together it's uh it reeks of insecurity to me yeah and i was going to ask you that do you think that conor mcgregor will show up in july first week of july big pay-per-view t-mobile do you think that guy will show up really certain 100 percent, like he used to be you know when he probably when the first time you guys fought that he's going to win i don't know i'm not i don't know what he's thinking i, I assume i assume he will you know uh, nobody handles the, the pressure, the big crowd, the, the cameras, the lights, as good as Connor does. He feeds off of that and loves it, you know. And uh, if he's not, it'll look like he is. I, you, I, I promise you that. If, if he's not confident, it'll look like he is. Do you like the fact that, uh, I mean, Fight Island, you had some fans in the stands, but do you like the fact of going through a whole fight week with fans? How, what's your feeling towards that? No, nah, fighting's hectic, man. I don't, I don't really like, you know. I... Uh, I wish they were home buying the pay-per-view. Wish it was an empty arena. <laughs> Buy the pay-per-view. You do? Uh, no, nah, it's nice, man. I have a lot of people going, um, family members, friends, who are very excited. And it's good. It makes me feel good to see this direction of, of the world, or of America at least, with, the, with things opening, full capacity, just a little bit of normalcy back in our lives. It's been a crazy couple years here. Uh, it's like ma wearing masks and going into places with my daughter. It's like it's, it's crazy how quick we adapt to something. You know, I'm walking around. My wife's like, "Why do you still have your mask on?" It's uh, no, it's it's good. I'm I'm happy for for everyone. I'm happy for sports. I'm happy for you know people who've been stuck at home. It's not a healthy place to be stuck uh, at home. You know, a lot of drinking, a lot of uh, a lot of bad stuff happens when you're trapped like that. So seeing the world open up, like I said, at least America, it, it's good. We're going in the right direction. But fans yelling, it's already, like I said, it's hectic. You're in the locker room warming up, then you go out there, you have to walk through the tunnel, and people are spilling beer and yelling crazy stuff at you when you're about to go fight this man, fight for your life in front of the world. It just adds more chaos to it for me, you know, but that's just, that's fighting. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's just what, that's what it is. And you basically answered it right there, but I will say, um, just because it, beca it was kind of like a factor in the first fight, it was like its own... Um, it turned into its own thing. It's like you were fighting Connor, but you were fighting the Irish fans. And I don't know if the Irish fans are going to be able to show up due to, you know, sort of what's, oh, what's are, lingering. They were in Abu Dhabi. Yeah. Of course they're going to be there. You, you were expecting to get the Irish fans in Vegas. Oh, come on. You're not? I, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was blown away whenever I go to weigh-ins in Abu Dhabi, and they're holding the Irish flags and, yeah. and chanting and stuff. I'm like, my goodness, this guy has a, has a uh, country behind him for real. Yeah. 
But, but, but because of the way that your first fight went, and I remember you telling me that you felt like you were fighting Irish fans as well. I felt but, like I wasn't just fighting Conor and Irish fans. I felt like I was fighting the media. I felt like the UFC wanted him to win. I was fighting the, the business. I was fighting the MMA critics, the armchair critics. I felt like I was fighting everyone. It was me against the world. That's what it felt like, and it's not, it's not that, you know, because no offense to you, but none of you guys matter, man. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, uh, when you watched Charles Oliveira fight Michael Chandler, where, where were you at and what was going through your mind? I was, uh, I think I was here in training camp. I, I was at my condo here in Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bet Oliveira to win, but I thought he was going to win by submission. I think I did a, a straight-up bet and a method, you know, by, by uh, sub. Okay. And what, like, only at mybookie.ag. <laughs> good, good plug, good plug. Um, was, it, was it difficult or, or um, was there anything that came along with it knowing that, uh, man, that's, that's what you wanted for a long time and you could have had it? Like, was there, like did, did it impact you personally at all watching someone else win a UFC lightweight championship? No, because Charles, Charles earned it. Charles earned that, that belt as much as anybody who's ever fought for the lightweight belt. You know, this guy's been around for 10, you know, he's a decade of wins and losses and rising back up and putting streaks together. Look, I mean, it's incredible what the guy's done. And he's a very dangerous fighter. Um, grew up in the octagon, you know, he did. Been watching the guy forever. It was more of a seeing Chandler, not that he doesn't, he, he didn't cut his teeth in the UFC. He's definitely been an MMA, you know, top MMA lightweight for a long time. But to see him come over and fight one guy who I just beat, and then get a title fight. I was a little bit, you know, maybe that was, like in my mind, I know that this is business, but at the same time, like those human instincts of like, oh, this guy, that was, you know, I stepped aside and let him have, mm -hmm. have this, but that's just, you know, I don't get too caught up in that stuff, but the thoughts do cross my mind. Yeah, and, and I imagine you, you feel like that's rectified. After you beat Connor, the title is 100% your next target. Yeah. Like, and, I, like I told you before this interview, I don't like to look too far ahead. Um, cause July 10th has to happen. All we got is plan A right now and that's fighting and winning on July 10th. And, and none of that's even a reality until I get my hand raised. So just focus on that and everything else will fall into place. But I, I do hundred percent believe that a win, another win over Conor McGregor, doesn't move me further. I'm still the number one contender. Mm -hmm. So. The, uh, one more question on sort of the finances of it. Um, and just like to, to, to think, like for you to try to wrap your mind around this, your disclosed pay the first time you fought Conor McGregor was $34,000. And now it's what, eight years, seven years later? And um, can you just kind of, even without getting in, into particulars, what is that like for you to think uh, the first time we fought, that was what I made, and now you stand to make whatever it is? I mean, just is that, um, how, how has that impacted you, I guess, as you prepare for this fight? Just kind of looking at, that's a, I mean, that was such a drastic change. It is, but you know all the all the blood, sweat, and tears that's gone on since since that first night we fought, and uh, the obstacles I've had to overcome, and you know my commitment, my uh, a lot of stuff's been tested, you know, uh, from from that first fight to this fight, you know, and a lot of personal stuff, overcoming the loss that could be uh, having the biggest surgery, being away from the sport the longest time in my career. And then coming back and having a fight of the year with, with Dan right after getting off the couch for I couldn't walk for eight weeks after surgery and, and all this other stuff with my hip, just a lot of challenges, man. And I and I feel like that has helped me evolve even more as mentally and physically as a person I am because I I couldn't a, a lot of stuff's going on. So I don't like I'm thankful, you know, to to be able to provide for my family. But a lot of work's been done, man. Uh, you see, after a lot of these trilogies where, like, those two guys are connected together forever, you think you and Connor will be like that? Like, will you have some kind of connection with him past July 10th? I'm not sure. Uh, if he ever stops being a probably. You know, if he just was a real person, and, and I'm sure we can, you know, talk about a lot of things and have a lot in common, obviously. We both uh, fight to feed our families and have overcome some stuff and, you know, have our hands in businesses and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, there's something special about trilogies that the fans get behind and, and relationships get built. And a cool one in this fight camp, I got to have uh, lunch with Mickey Ward on the 19th year anniversary of him and Gotti.